In this AQA micro video, let's spend a few minutes together thinking about the environment as an economic resource. Well, one distinction we can make is between renewable and non-renewable or finite resources. So renewable resources are natural resources that can be replenished or replaced over time. The obvious examples would be wind power, water and solar energy. The sun's always going to shine, the wind will always blow, particularly if you live where I live. And other examples include things like plant-based materials, like wood and cotton, which can be replenished by replanting and growing more plants. Now, renewables are replaceable if the rate of extraction is less than the natural rate at which a resource regenerates. In contrast, non-renewable resources are ultimately finite in supply. So with the likes of crude oil or coal or gas and a range of other fossil fuels, no mechanisms exist at present to replenish them, and they will run out if we consume them at the current rate. The rate of extraction is really key here, and the rate of extraction typically, if you believe in the price mechanism, depends in part on the market price. So the price of crude oil goes up, there's an incentive, an economic incentive for crude oil producers to extract more from the ground. So higher prices can also drive faster extraction. Now, another distinction to make is between resource depletion and resource depreciation. So with resource dep depletion, that is a decline in the stock of resources available. So, for example, the effects of depopulation, climate change and low investment in new capital. And land can also become depleted or degraded as soil quality diminishes. So countries can often suffer from human capital flight, capital scrapping, natural disasters and deforestation, all of which uh, resource depletion can lead to a fall in their long run productive capacity. A resource depreciation is when the productivity of resources tends to fall with age and also with repeated use. If you have an old computer, you've probably found it gets slower and slower over time. Machinery wears out and breaks down more frequently. If you don't use them, skills decline in the labour market. That's sometimes called skills atrophication. Buildings need repair and infrastructure often ages. That's particularly the case with power and transport. Another key environmental concept just to be aware of uh, is common pool resource. Now, common pool resource is jointly used by a group of people, a community. They're an extremely interesting concept in economics, and good examples include fish stocks. They're not owned by any single individual or group. Uh, they're jointly used by fishermen around the world. Public parks and forests and other examples of open spaces shared by a community. And one can make a case for saying that clean air is also a common pool resource that's shared by everyone in the area. Now, crucially, there are significant threats to the stock of and the usefulness of common pool resources. And it's extremely important you become aware of a concept or the issue of the tragedy of the commons. Now, the tragedy of the commons is the idea that when common pool resources are shared and not owned by any one person, typically individuals tend to overuse them because their own self-interest or their own benefit is always greater than, uh, than their cost. And they may not consider the long-term effects of their actions. And they might over-harvest common grazing land or pollute a shared resource. And that can lead to the depletion or indeed, ultimately, the destruction of the resource, which affects everyone who uses it. So the collapse of fish stocks in a particular area, for example. And that's why it's important to have systems or policies in place to regulate common pool resources. Things like uh, perhaps tradable fishing quotas, and uh, imposable, enforceable pollution controls. And when we think about the environment, obviously one thinks about the growing threats from climate change and the increasing economic as well as human cost of, of natural disasters. This chart shows the greatest economic da damage from natural disasters. Uh, the tsunami and the earthquake in Japan in 2011 is widely regarded as having the biggest economic impact with a damage in excess of $210 billion dollars. Hurricanes, earthquakes, uh, including quite a few in, there in, in China and in the Caribbean, flash floods in Europe in 2021. These major environmental events have a huge economic as well as a social and human cost. Now, if you're talking about the environment, you need to bring in the concept of sustainable growth. Sustainable growth 
seeks to achieve long-term prosperity whilst also considering the well-being of current and future generations. So we talk about something called intergenerational equity. Now, unlike usual economic growth, often associated with deforestation, mass fishing, resource depletion, etc., sustainable growth tries to balance economic progress with social equity and environmental stewardship. Now, stewardship is basically you try to promote resource efficiency, pollution reduction, and critically, you try to bring in systems and incentives and policies that conserves ecosystems. There are so many threats to sustainable growth, waste from production and consumption. Britain's, in fact, one of the biggest pieces of plastic waste in the world. And over half of our plastic waste is exported to other countries. Global warming, of course, in 2020, 2016, the hottest year recorded in 2023 is likely to have overtaken 2020, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. The depletion of natural capital like assets, forestry, water, stocks, water scarcity becoming a huge issue, biodiversity in land threatens growth. And humanity is causing a rapid loss of biodiversity and with it, Earth ability to support complex life. You'll be well aware of these. These are some of the most important, perhaps the most important issues of the age, threats to sustainable growth. And there's a really important concept known as ecological overshoot. Each year, the Global Footprint Network uh, makes an estimate of the uh, what the impact is of the, the demand for natural resources. And since the 1970s, that demand has exceeded that of what the earth itself can regenerate. So as of 2022, which is when this chart was taken from, if the entire world population lived like those in the United States, we need resources equivalent to five times what our earth can regenerate to satisfy global demand. Here's a chart showing uh, concentration matters and the most polluted countries in the world. Chad came top in Iraq and Pakistan, came top in 2022. So pollution, obviously, a huge issue. And, of course, deforestation, an enormous issue. Brazil has been at the forefront of the, the whole debate about the scale and extent and intensity of deforestation. This chart shows global primary forest loss in 2022 by leading country. Leading being a slightly pejorative word there. Well, hopefully the new Brazilian president, the new Brazilian government, will make uh, a headway in cutting the rates of deforestation in these countries. And, of course, litter and waste is an enormous issue. This is a survey of litter types found in oceans worldwide in 2021, from plastic bags to plastic bottles and wrappers, synthetic rope, fishing gear, plastic caps and lids and drinks cans. The plastic waste tsunami is something that many countries are trying to do something about. In our next video, we'll take a few minutes to think about something called the circular economy.